Good evening and welcome to Wapakoneta High School, where tonight WOSN brings you the Division VI semifinal matchup, the Versailles Tigers and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Our pregame tonight is sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years, and we are proud to call this our home. Mark Shine and John Zerbe here from Wapak. John, let's take a little bit at the Versailles Tigers, 12-2 and two on the season, second, third place in the MAC. Yeah, they've had an incredible season, Mark, and when you look at what they've accomplished, not only they're 12 and 2, but those two losses are to some pretty good teams, Marion Local and Coldwater, Cold yes. by a total of eight points between the two games. So, incredible season by Coach Ryan Jones to, to have them at this point 12 and 2 in the state semifinals. And they've gotten this way. Obviously, they're very talented offensively, but the defense is giving up only eight points a game. Yeah, I mean, they're scoring over 30, only giving up eight points a game. And we, like we said, they're primarily a running team. We'll talk about that as the game goes on. But when you play great defense, it's a cliche, but you put yourself in position to win games, and that's why they're here this evening. The Versailles Tigers are the visitors on the scoreboard. How about we give their keys first? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that they're going to have to just make sure that they win the turnovers. Uh, you know, whenever you're playing two primarily running teams, turnovers are always uh, key. Second thing is we talked about defense just a minute ago, only giving up eight points a game, but they have to have uh, great tackling tonight. They can't give up explosive plays. they got to make sure they tackle well. And then finally, special teams. I mean, in a tight game, I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Field position is going to be a huge and critical thing. Any point that they get on the scoreboard is going to be important, and special teams is going to come to play tonight. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs, they are 12-2 and two champions of the Northwest Conference this year. They started out 1-2, and two, and in those three games, they gave up 79 points. Then they went on a winning streak of nine in a row, and they've given up just a total of 109 points in those games. It's been a defensive turnaround for them. Yeah, and I think, you know, you look at Columbus Grove, and they've been here before. Uh, Coach Andy Schaefer's just done an incredible job with this program, especially the last five to six years. They've just been at the top of the Northwest Conference, and you look at their losses, too. One of those teams, Patrick Henry, playing in a state semifinal tonight in Division 7. So, you know, Columbus Grove, uh, I wouldn't say it's a veteran team, but but a, a team built on defense, and again, running. It, they're, they're two mirrors of each other tonight, so it's going to be fun to see what happens and how it plays out. Grove Bulldogs, 12-2. and two. How about keys to the game for them? Well, I think you get this far, and one thing you always have to talk about is physicality, and, and they want to make sure that because Versailles plays on the MAC and is used to that that uh, level of competition, they've got to match the physicality of the, the Tigers tonight. The second thing is they got to win the line of scrimmage. Uh, it's going to be... Um, it, it's going to be it's going to be one between the tackles, and it's not you're not going to see a lot of passing. You're not going to see a lot of high flying play. So it's going to have to be one at the line of scrimmage. And finally, the big thing I think is to to really uh, put first sales in long second and third down situations. If they can get a good stop on first down, keeping uh, the, the the first the second and the third down beyond six seven eight yards, I think it will give them an opportunity to get a stop. The winner will go to Canton next week, and they will play on a Friday. Correct Friday, Friday at ten yep. thirty. Yes in the state championship game. This has been our Lima Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show, the area's premier Chevrolet Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. The kickoff comes up right after this. You're watching state semifinal football on WOSN. We're back at Wapakoneta High School. It is Versailles Tigers and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Our sponsor for the first quarter is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years, and we are proud to call this our home. Mark Shine, John Zerby. John, a little bit unusual as we've seen more and more of this this year. Versailles won the toss, and they want the football. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of these situations is is that uh, we think this is going to be a, a defensive game, and I think that it's going to be a struggle, but I think also time of possession is going to be a big thing, and if they can get the kickoff and have a long drive here, it could be a good footing to get this game going. Our officials tonight, our head referee is Jeff Klaus, the umpire Jim Epperly, head linesman is Ben Mock, the line judge is Brett Roberson, the back judge is Brady Mulholland, and the center judge is Greg Bartimus. Sales will take the football first. That means you will see the player of the year in the Southwest District at quarterback, and that is Michael Osborne. And once we get the kickoff in here by number 80, Evan Veerhoff, we'll have a chance to give you some of his numbers. It is 29 degrees, John, but there's no wind. It's a pretty good night for the end of November for football. You know, it's really nice uh, on the field. Uh, feels good. Feels good. You know, the teams are bundled up a little bit, but it's not going to affect the game whatsoever. Got that big Versailles Tiger flag flying across the way. They take that thing with them everywhere. One of the traditions in uh, in high school football. And uh, we're having, ready to have Evan Veerhoff kick it off. 
Looks like deep he's got uh, number 12, Jace Watrin. And along with him is A.J. Griesdorn, I believe. Let's see where the kickoffs go. It's headed towards Watrin. And about the 13-yard line. And Watrin will take it over the 27, and that's where the Versailles Tigers will begin. Michael Osborne is their quarterback. He is 98 of 158 with seven interceptions on the season, 1,624 yards. He has thrown 16 touchdown passes, but he's just under 1,000 yards rushing and 10 scores there as well. And joining him in the backfield will be Joel Garrett. Joel uh, has uh, 1,011 yards this year and 23 scores. He wears number nine for sales in the white shirts with the uh, orange trim, black pants, of course, Columbus Grove, the red and gray this evening. Osborne will hand off to Garrett, and Garrett, nice hole, He'll go over the 33-yard line. And that's one of the things you're going to see both teams try to do is establish a really um, productive first down. And you, as a fan, you may say, well, that's what's the big deal about that? Well, there's two running teams. They both are stylistically very similar. First down is going to be a key tonight for both offenses. Osborne has Garrett on his left hip. Here's Schmidt-Meyer in motion. Here's the pitch. Garrett trying to get the left end. And he does. He gets up over the 40-yard line, and that will be a first down. Back-to-back -back runs. Joel Garrett. Well, and I like the motion there to just kind of to kind of throw the uh, Columbus Grove defense off lane in Houston making that tackle there for the Bulldogs. But you're going to see a lot of shifts tonight, a lot of motion, not a lot of fanciness out of both offenses, but really old style football and a new look format. First down there, sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Here's Osborne again. Schmidt Meyer motion again and sets. Garrett trying to get the right end. Bounces off the first guy, but not to say, yes, he did. He got through numbers wow. two and number three to get a little bit out of that one. Yeah, my, uh, Garrett did a really great job of stringing that out and making sure that uh, it was a tough yard that he got. He probably ran 20 yards sideways, but great job defensively for the Blue Bulldogs. A couple missed tackles there, but did a, uh, Barraza came up at the, the last minute there and made a nice tackle. Landon Schrader had a shot at him in the backfield, but too much leg strength got away from that. We'll go to second and nine. One of the things I've noticed out of her sales is double tight ends in their formations early, now more to a, a split end set here. Trips left, Osborne to throw, guns it over the middle, it's intercepted, it's picked off. This is Zach Reynolds, Reynolds headed up the sideline and cuts back and is going to get knocked out of bounds. Zach Reynolds had five interceptions coming into tonight, just picked one off and ran it back to the three. They ran a trips formation. They had a receiver open across the middle. It was more of their check down receiver, but they tried to stretch it into the flat and it looked like he overthrew it a little bit or maybe misplaced the throw and Reynolds makes a huge defensive stop. The first turnover of the game and it's a critical one in the first quarter. All the way down to the four yard line. That brings Landon Best. He is the quarterback. Trenton Barraza wears number three. He's a running back. We'll try to get their stats as this one progresses. Best wears number two. This is Best, left side, and he's going to get snowed under at about the two-yard line. Well, it's a good first play. You know, you're going to focus on uh, on Trenton Barraza here because he's obviously one of the leading rusher and one of the best running backs in our area, but Landon Bess has also been an extremely effective rusher for the Dogs this year. This is Best again following Barraza, and he's going to get knocked backwards. This for sales team has been stingy defensively all year long. They give up just 76 yards on the ground for the season on average. Yeah, and I think we talked about on the pregame, they only give up eight points a game, and so that's, you know, uh, already with uh, Grove and great field possession, uh, inside the red zone, inside the five-yard line, it's still going to be tough to score here. A red zone sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling. We appreciate their sponsorship this evening. There's man in motion. Pitch Barraza trying to get to the edge. It's the ball loose. 
It is not. Barraza got knocked down at the four-yard line, and they have done a wonderful job defensively, have the Versailles Tigers. And that's going to be an interesting call for Coach Andy Schaefer early. What will you do on fourth down? Do you get points in a game like this? You're going to go for it. Looks like he's keeping his offense on the field. He's trying, going to try to get those six points. Evan Bierhoff is four of six on field goals for the season, 44-49 on PATs, which will be about what this is, but they're going to go for it. Barraza is up in the uh, Wildcat. Barraza goes left, looks to cut back in, and picks his way, and picks his way, got in the end zone. I really like the formation call, Mark. They went trips to the field side, but they went with their running straight to the weak side of the field, went with the wildcat formation, Barraza in the shotgun, and went around the end, guys blocking down, guys pulling, and he kind of just slithered his way in there. It wasn't an easy score, but a big pickup for the dogs early. Our touchdown sponsor has Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Our extra points are sponsored that by Dale's Concrete. And Beerhoff hammers that one through thanks to the turnover and the big run back. Bulldogs up 7-0. You're watching High School Playoff Football WOSN. We're back at Wapak Canetta. Columbus Grove jumps out 7-0. Our scoreboard tonight is sponsored by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com and see how we can help you. Took the football, did Versailles, but turned it over and gave up seven. Well, and that's just an unfortunate start for the Tigers. I'm not sure they've started any game like that this season with a quick turnover and score by the opposing team. Beerhoff's kickoff. This is Bergman. Bretton Bergman. Excuse me, Lane Bergman, excuse me, runs it back to about the 30-yard line. Where Versailles will come out for their second possession. And you know, Mark, in that first series, Versailles moved the ball very effectively in their first few plays. I was a little bit surprised about not not necessarily a pass play, but it was more of a just a straight drop back pass instead of going play action. Look for for sales to get back to what they do to run the ball. Look for Michael Osborne to get involved here too. Osborne wears number 17. He's got Garrett beside him. Bergman came in motion. This is Garrett again and some tough yardage for him and he spins up over the 37 yard line. Joel Garrett, 5'10", 200 pounds. Well, and that's just a really nice play call, and this is what they did in the first series is they just moved the chains, and, and five yards on first down is exactly what they want. Now they got two downs uh, to basically, you know, mix up the calls here and, and try to get those first downs. Second and five, Tigers. Osborne will keep this time. He goes off left tackle and will push close to the 39-yard line. That will be short a couple, first down. Yeah, I really think Osborne is, is the difference maker in this game. I think if you're looking at, you know, who do you stop? You know, what do you take away? You look at both sides. You have so many good athletes. Best, Barraza, Garrett, and Osborne. I think you got to look at stopping Michael Osborne. We have a Grove Bulldog down on the field while the medical staff tends to him. We're going to take a break. You're watching high school tournament football, WOSN. The injured player for Columbus Grove was Landon Houston. The 5'9 sophomore came off the field. Hopefully he will be back. Right now, Versailles faces third and one from their 40. Osborne will go over left guard and pick up that first down. A Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So once again, Versailles getting in that rhythm, and I think the best way you can get momentum back, because obviously Grove has momentum right now, is to stay on the field with your offense. Pick up these first downs and just get in position to score. Two receivers each way with Schmidtmeyer in the backfield with Osborne. Osborne to throw again, and the quarterback draw action, and he will go over the 45-yard line. He was knocked down as he was headed in that direction by Ky Kylan Mays. 
Yeah, one of the things that um, you know I, I, I noticed about Grove already, they typically run a 4-3 defense. They're in that tonight, but they're playing a little bit more press coverage because of the threat of Osborne and Garrett. They've got to have nine guys in the box to prepare and to stop that run. And you can see already they're, they're going to press and they're going to try to stop and get as many guys up to the line of scrimmage as they can. So you're, you're looking at those wide receivers then playing a little one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely. Garrett sets up. Schmidtmeyer goes in motion. This is a pitch to Garrett. Right in. Garrett cuts back, and he's close to a first down. Gets to the 49-yard line of Columbus Grove. Well, they've been effective. I mean, everything that they've done, really one mistake uh, you know, early in the game has cost them. But if you're Versailles, you're down seven, but you really shouldn't you shouldn't panic whatsoever. Get in your, your game plan and do what you do. High formation, Schmidtmeyer in front of Garrett. And Osborne checks with Coach Jones on the play call. Play clock approaching 10. Garrett made the first guy miss and got a first down. A Lee's famous recipe chicken first down. And I think that's going to be something that we talked about in the in the pregame with the keys to the game, but I think missed tackles and or breaking tackles, however you want to look at it, is going to be critical because you've seen uh, Joel Garrett tonight break tackles already, and that is so big in a game like this because those are extra yards that are critical. Osborne sets up with Garrett on his right hip. This will be... Garrett again off left tackle this time and nowhere to go. Nowhere to go, but if you see Michael Osborne, he's looking at Coach Ryan Jones, looking at that RPO option. You know, no one was really covering down on Osborne. Look for him to get involved here. I know they've they've had him carry the ball a little bit, but I really look for them to at some point unleash him and start to, to really put the, the ball in his hands. Trips left, single receiver right. Schmidtmeyer in the backfield, along with Osborne. Grove rushes four. Osborne looks, breaks containment, goes up the middle and gets snowed under at the 40. Good pick up to the 40 yard line, got about five. Well, that's just a drop back pass. Quick routes, everybody ran a quick route. Good decision not to throw the football that time. And that's the thing about Osborne. Even though you are running a pass play, he has that elusiveness with his feet. He can make a play. And now you're past the 50 yard line here, Mark. You're on the 40, you're in third and five, but typically this could be a, a, a two down situation here. Trips to the left side again, single receiver right. Osborne's going to run left, cuts inside, first down and more to the 30 and spins inside the 30 to about the 26-yard line and picks up a lead, famous recipe chicken first down. So it makes this so difficult because in every defense, I know the offenses are different these days, but defenses are designed to cover everybody but the quarterback. And the reality is, is that when a quarterback runs the football, you just don't have the guys to pick up and have a guy on him. Nice job by Michael Osborne. No flags here in the opening quarter, but our, our flags are sponsored tonight by Burke Petroleum, offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. 11th player to drive, Schmidtmeyer this time with a carry, and he will get about a yard. And this is what Versailles does. Not only does Garrett and Osborne get a lot of the carries, but they bring into that third, that fourth rusher to kind of take the heat off of those other guys and to kind of mix it up a little bit to keep the defense honest. Earlier we talking about you and I, about the longtime Columbus Grove GOAT coach, Jerry uh, Cooper. Jerry told me that's called stealing 50 yards with your fullback. If you can get 50 with him in a game. That's right. Keep him happy, too. That you're not people down for your running back. Keep his mom and dad happy, yeah. too. There you mom, go. mom especially, right? Yeah, Schmidtmeyer <laughs> sets up on Osborne's right hip. Here it's in the slot. And he got him. Tackled in the backfield. He's brought down by Kalen Mays on the sack. Well, I love the pressure by Kalen Mays. That you know, Kalen Mays is a nice looking kid. He does a nice job from that defensive tackle position. He got in the backfield, but kept his composure, kept his feet underneath him, and made a really big stop. It's gonna put Versailles in a big third and long situation. That is correct. They need to get to the 16 yard line, and they are on the 32. It's third down. 
Spitmeyer again on the hip of Osborne. Osborne to throw. Caught. This is Watron. Watron made a nice catch, got down close to the first down. I really like that call. It's called a tunnel screen, Mark. And the reason why you do that is you, you drop that receiver. You're playing press coverage. You have that slot receiver come out. Uh, Trent Barraza's on that slot, on that number one receiver, man to man. So they get a block on him, and now he can tunnel through. What a great call, giving Versailles a big first down. In the red zone, sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora. Pay top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. 419 384 3392. They needed 16, they got 16. Here's pitch. Garrett headed left side. Garrett was, as he was crossing the 15 yard line, was hit by uh, Akmodi. Yeah, one of the things that I like that Versailles does is that, that yeah, they are in the spread offense, but they, they're constantly running tight ends, and then they will get under center. And, you know, in, in that play, that's a, that's called an, an O play. It's an off-tackle play where the quarterback not only pitches it, but he gets out and blocks too. I really like that old-school football. Almost to the 14-yard line. They can get a first down at the six as we're under a minute to go in the opening quarter. It's kind of got number 80 this time has slid into that blocking back position. That's Levi Bargy. And we're gonna get a timeout for sales as they wanna talk things over in this critical situation. Back in a moment, you're watching High School State Playoff Football on WOSN. Back at WAPA, where tonight our timeouts are sponsored by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. This is one of those situations, John, you may not get a lot of opportunities to score. Coach is calling timeout. Make sure we get everybody on the same page. Yeah, it's a really good timeout because typically, even in the first half, Mark, you don't you don't use timeouts a lot. So I really like when you, in, in, a, in a game like this, using timeouts in the first quarter just to get everybody on the same page. But if you notice, Mark, I mean, this has been, this this drive is exactly what Versailles has wanted to do from the get-go. We've only seen Groves' offense on the field for for three plays tonight. And so Versailles has been on the field the majority of the first quarter. Hopefully they can get a score out of this. 40 seconds to go. Change the formation a bit. Garrett's in the backfield. Smithmeyer's gonna go in motion, set up on the right wing. And Osborne will roll right. Look, look, throws to the middle, it's caught. Or no, it's knocked loose. Defensive play by Reynolds, by Steckscholdy in the end zone, or in front of the end zone, knocked it down. Yeah, nice job by Zane Stechulity to come over the top. The ball was there. He made a nice play on it. Um, but the reality is, is he came through. I think Grant Eversole was there to help to knock the ball loose and to now put Versailles in a really tough third and eight situation. You might get open, you might, but you're going to have to pay for it if you're going to catch Absolutely. the football. Absolutely. And the contact was sufficient enough to knock it loose. Third down. And that's kind of what you teach in zone coverage. It's kind of like basketball. You know, once they get the ball, you, you run and you jump them and knock the ball loose on contact. Third down. Osborne fakes, steps back, and now wants to run. And he jumps down to about the 10 yard line. It's going to be short of the first down. And here comes the field goal team. Our instant replay that are sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your outdoors, your indoors out. Here comes the field goal attempt. PAT guy is Garrett. He has had a really good year in that particular position. Osborne's the holder. And they're going to let the quarter run out before they decide how to handle this field goal attempt. Columbus Grove, who ran four plays in the opening quarter. The fourth one was for a touchdown. We'll take a 7-0 lead to the second. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. We're back in Wapakoneta. Our second quarter is sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. 
And Versailles is going to line up for a field goal. Our field goals and extra points tonight are sponsored by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. So here is Garrett with Osborne to hold. It'll be a 27-yard field goal. Kick is up, and it is. And it's good from 27 yards. A field goal makes it 7-3 in favor of Columbus Grove. John, that was a 15-play, 16-play drive that started way back on their own 31-yard line. And certainly time of possession helped them. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you're for sales right now, you, you, you hate to get not get a touchdown, but you do want points. We talked about this being a very low scoring game, um, and I think it's going to hold true as far as, you know, as we've looked at the possessions here, and um, the reality is is that you did get some points. That's a good thing, but I feel like the momentum's, you know, evened out. I don't know if they've got the momentum back, but it's evened out a little bit, and so, uh, you know, really good drive by Versailles. Uh, but great defensive stop by Columbus Grove. I love what Connor Douglas did there on third quarter, the end of the, the first quarter. Okay, that uh, had to reset the uh, play clock, the time clock. It did not start, and the official Jeff Klaus just said we want to make it at 11.57 as for sales will kick off. Well, and this will be interesting for Grove because, you, you know, besides those four plays that we talked about in the first quarter for Grove, you know, they had the ball inside the five-yard line. They really haven't been on the field. And if you're, you know, if you're uh, an offensive lineman who maybe doesn't play defense or a Landon Best who, you know, is a quarterback, you've been standing for a long time. So you're itching to get out on the field and get the opportunity to, to play a little bit here. Bowling, bowling kicks off. Football's headed in the direction of Zach Reynolds who bobbles it. And Watchman's right there, and there's a scramble for it. Still scrambling for it, and who's going to get it? For sale says they got it, and they do. Well, I'll tell you what, he never, cl he never uh, cleanly recepted the football. It was bouncing around. Um, he couldn't make up his mind whether he was going to pick it up or just fall on it. And boy, what great hustle by the Versailles Tigers to get down there and another. We've seen two turnovers tonight, Mark, and they are both critical turnovers for each team. Yeah, each of them putting the, their offense in great field position and stress to the defense. That's going to start on the seven yard line. They're already in the red zone, sponsored by Northern, Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Full house backfield, Osborne under center. Keeping himself. And he will get, did he get there? Nope, he's gonna he's be close. close. Yeah, he's gonna be close. And that's reminiscent of an old Al Hedrick uh, full house backfield, and I love the, the fake by Osborne and getting him out on the corner to get him inside the one yard line. He kind of waited for Schmidtmeyer to get in front of him, too. Come on, big fella. Clear some space for me. Down to the one yard line, a six yard pickup. Same formation. There he comes. Ethan Johnson. Now he didn't jump. And we're going to get a flag. The first call of each quarter is sponsored by Burke Petroleum. They're now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum. Dependable, available at 800-776-3097. Yeah, they're going to call Grove for encroachment. And you can see, uh, you know, Grove's a little off right now. After that turnover, they're trying to get guys on and off the field, and then they get the penalty inside the one. Osborne will push the pile forward, and there he is. He's in. What a turn of events, Mark. And, you know, we talked about momentum a little bit. Now Versailles has that momentum. Those two mistakes tonight, the pick and then the, the fumble on the kickoff, have been proven to be two scores for each team, or a score for each team. Our touchdowns are sponsored by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Here's Garrett to do the PAT duties again. Garrett in for the extra point. Extra points are sponsored by Dale's Concrete this evening. A little snap, and Garrett lines it through. Thanks to a turnover and a score, Versailles takes a 10-7 lead to watch high school tournament football on WOSN.
Our scoreboard tonight is sponsored by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And our scoreboard has flipped now. It's last 10 points have gone to Versailles Tigers. They take a three-point lead. And besides the long drive by Versailles, it's really just been what the two mistakes that we talked about earlier, Mark, is just giving each other good field position on turnovers. This will head to Reynolds. That's Barraza. Barraza will get up over the 26-yard line where Columbus Grove will take over, having run just four plays in the football game with 11 minutes to go here in quarter number two. And I think the, the last thing you want to do here is panic a little bit. I mean, you're, you're it's 10 to seven, Mark. It's 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 a game, that's, it's anybody's game right now. So I think if you're Grove, you get back, you get on your offense on the field. They have not been on the field. You run some plays here, you just try to get first downs right now. Landon Best, the quarterback, wears number two. Trenton Barraza wears number three. This is Barraza off left tackle. And he lowers his shoulder. Perry Schmidtmeyer up to almost a first down. Maybe he did, yes it is. Well, they ran there, probably probably one of my favorite formations in football. It's trips to the field, but there's a tight end to the, to the weak side, and you run, uh, you run your running back with guards pulling to the short side of the field, and nice pickup, good first down for the Bulldogs. First down to the 37, our lead famous recipe chicken, first down. Barraza will set up behind Best. This is Barraza off the right side this time, and just a short game. Short gain, but you know that first down, that critical first down, is just getting the Grove offense their feet wet. I mean, like we've said, not a lot of plays so far. Uh, Coach Schaefer hasn't been able to get into a, a rhythm out there, and he wants to get those guys into a rhythm and get some of this momentum back. To the 39-yard line, it'll be second and eight. Dustin Mraza in the backfield, base center in motion to this near side. There's the ship. This is best quick pass. That's blocked. Knocked down. That was knocked down by Bowen. 6'3", 195-pound junior just knocked it down. And believe it or not, Grove was probably lucky that it was knocked down because it was a short route, and Versailles is playing press coverage as well. Both teams playing up tonight. They're going to challenge each other to throw the ball. It was well covered, so Grove might have uh, really, uh, I guess, not necessarily gotten lucky, but they might have uh, had, had a break there. Three receivers to the top of the screen, two to the bottom, landed best. Alone in the backfield. Best to throw. Throws it up the sideline and it is. Is it picked off? Making a play on the football was A.J. Griesdorn and he was out of bounds. A.J. Griesdorn did a great job of reading that. He was actually playing the safety position and, uh, well, outside linebacker position and, um, and came up and, and made a nice job in that coverage and made a pick. Just couldn't get his feet down, but ni nice stop for the Versailles Tigers there. Well, A.J. Griesdorn has six INTs in 14 football games, so came down just out of bounds with that one. Dylan Merch will be the punter, averages about 32 a punt for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Osborne is deep, along with Lane Bergman. That punt went right up the elevator shaft oh boy. and out of bounds. And that's tough. That's tough. When we talked about special teams, we've seen uh, a couple big special teams play so far, and uh, obviously he's not happy with that punt there, but it's going to give Versailles great starting field position here. We got a media timeout here in Wapak. Back in a moment in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're back at Wapak, where tonight's school board is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Structure Outdoor Ohio brings your indoor out. They sponsor instant replays this evening. Already in plus territory at the 46. Garrett with a pickup. There's a nice tackle there by Lyle Knockmoody for the uh, Columbus Grove Bulldogs, one of their best defensive players who's had a really nice season this year. Uh, this Grove defense, like we've talked about, both teams having great defense, and you've seen it so far, Mark. There hasn't been a lot of scoring, and that's what's, um, you know, why they've been so successful this season. John, I saw the, the uh, Columbus Grove Lipsy game, and Knockmoody just, he just gave Lipsy fits. He was so good defensively. Spent the whole night in the back. To the far side, one to the near side here. There's the snap. 
Here's Garrett again, and he will be diving down towards a first down, I think. Let's see what the call is. The Lee's famous recipe chicken first down it is to the 35-yard line. Yeah, just moving the chains, keeping the clock going. This is what Versailles wants to do. Um, they've got the ball past the 50 um, in uh, Columbus Grove uh, territory and just literally running the same plays over and over again. Nine minutes to go here in the quarter. Osborne and Garrett in the backfield again. Flips to the left, single receiver right. Osborne back in, going to quick pitch it out. Garrett makes the first guy miss, uses his speed to get to the corner before he gets knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Versailles and what they're doing up front. I mean, these linemen are getting out and really creating a lot of open spaces for their for the running backs to get out there. and. To get good yardage, and Garrett has just really been the workhorse tonight so far. He's been, uh, I feel like every other uh, play has been to him and really carrying this offense, the load for this Those offense. Those linemen are Alex Gilmore, Zach Cardanier, Dominic Bargi, Dominic Meyer. The tight end is Brady Flippo and Caden Starkey as well. Comes motion. This time they give it to Watford. Watford gets the edge and gets down to about the 21. That will be a first down. And that's what happens when you're continually running um, similar sets, and then now your motion from the uh, from the wide receiver position, kind of a jet sweep looking play, and gets out on the edge and gets really nice first down yardage. Right at the red zone, sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, scrap cars, 419. -3 Three eight four thirty three ninety two. First down from the twenty. Osborne alone in the backfield. Osborne all by himself this time in the backfield. There's the motion by Garrett. Garrett, take it to him. And Osborne will push it down to about the fifteen. So this kind of slow, methodical, you know, even even looking at how they're getting plays in, Mark, using up a lot of the time on the, on the clock and just soaking up time, keeping Grove's offense off of the field. Osborne and Garrett. This will be Garrett off the left tackle. Garrett down near the goal line. Garrett had 23 touchdown runs on in the season. He pushed that one down to about the one yard line, picked up, get another first down. Yeah, and if Grant Eversall doesn't make that tackle on the goal line, then for sales has uh, even increasing their lead to, to nine points. But, you know, if you're Columbus Grove right now, you've got to have somebody make a play because right now you can start to see Versailles wearing down this, this Columbus Grove front uh, on, offensively. Columbus Grove gives up 13 points per game and under 100 yards on the ground on average. Turn, snap, Garrett pushes and trying to push the pile in. Grove, did he get there that last surge? He did. What a surge by Garrett right at the end. Well, I'll tell you what, Joel Garrett went in. It didn't look like he was going to make it in, and that second push that he had really elevated him and get in, getting into the end zone, and now it's going to push this Versailles Tiger lead to nine points. Touchdowns are sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Our PAT sponsor tonight is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial residential concrete needs. Here's Garrett trying to put his team up by 10. Snaps a bit low. Osborne gets it down. They sail it through for sales. Takes a 17-7 lead over Columbus Grove. 6.54 to go in the second. You're watching high school playoff football. WSN. Back at Wapak Canada, we're tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com and see how we can help you. 17-7, three minutes and three seconds. They went 46 yards on seven plays. Great special teams play again, set it up. Great special teams, and we talked about that in the pregame. And if you're Columbus Grove right now, you're down 10, you've got to get some first downs. You've got to get your offense out on the field. 
Barraza drifts back near the goal line to secure the football with a head of steam over the 20, where he is brought down, and it will be Columbus Grove football. Well, and it just feels like, Mark, you know, and, and I don't have an official time of possession right now, but it just feels like Versailles has had the ball the entire night. I mean, even when Grove did score, it was, it was only four plays. If you're Coach Andy Schaefer, you've got to create something here, and it's not only on the ground, but maybe even through the air, letting Lane and Best do his thing a little bit and throw the ball. Uh, Grove has had eight offensive plays and a punt. Barraza will set up behind Landon Best. That mesh point didn't work. Well, I think it was a busted play. It looked like they were wanting to run a triple option from the gun with Barraza and Best, and it looks like maybe one of the two went the wrong way and kind of a busted play, loss of a yard on first down. Let's move it back to the 22-yard line. Almost halfway through quarter number two here from Wapak High School. Mercy Health Field. Best with Barraza on his right. This is Barraza. Cuts back inside. Well, that, up near the 30-yard line. Good pickup on second down. It's the same play they ran the last drive on first down when they picked up that early first down. Same play, same formation. Trips to the wide side of the field, tight end to the short side, and Barraza picking up the first down. They need three. Third and three. Here comes for sales. Best leads forward, and he's not going to get there. A little surprised about the hurry up uh, offense there and a quick uh, count, trying to get, you know, maybe trying to catch for sales off a little bit. But, um, you know, now that you're in a fourth down situation, you, you bring the punt team out. I mean, you're really deep in your own territory for this early in the game, Mark. Dominic Meyer on the bottom of the pile. It is fourth and two. And I think Coach Schaefer's going to think about this one, maybe take a timeout. I think nope, they're going to go for it. He's going to go for it. Yeah. Landed best, Trent Barraza. This is Barraza, left end, first down. I think they found something, you know, as far as where to go, you know, running to the short side of the field. Different formation, but same play now. They have two first downs. Uh, that play has been effective by getting, letting Barraza run to the short side of the field, pulling both guards, and that was a huge first down for the Bulldogs. Seven Much needed. pick up to the 38. Our first downs are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. First down, Grove. This is Barraza. He leans forward for about a yard. This time, three were at the Bulldogs. Did that, did that play, that just didn't seem to mesh quite right, it's, it's, did it? There's something not quite yeah. right about that play right now. And I think that's the same play that they tried to run that they, they kind of muffled early in, in this series. So um, the timing seems to be off. I think it's a triple option, but I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong before, Mark. <laughs> it's a triple option. We'll go with that. Two receivers to the right, single receiver left. Barraza's this get is Barraza again. again. He will get to about the 43. Trenton Barraza, 1,835 yards rushing on the season, 20 touchdowns. He's also caught eight balls for a couple of scores. And he will take it to the 42. And they're looking at uh, third and a lengthy six. Now he's so fun to watch. Such an incredible athlete. And I mean, not only on the football field, but on the on the basketball court as well. I mean, it's just so fun to watch. Reynolds goes in motion. Brazo will come back this way, gets over the 45. That's going to be short, however. Yeah, but, you know, same formation from the last time, same play. It's the same play that they're running to that short side of the field. This time they motion, they bring Reynolds down. to. It's not a crack block. You're not allowed to do that anymore, but really get a seal block, I'll call it, and uh, really puts them in a really critical fourth down situation. I think your coach, Andy Schaefer, he's already established, I'm yep. going for it. I want to win this game. It is fourth and two from their 46, 321 to go before halftime. Best alone in the backfield. Braz is in the wing. Here he goes in motion. Best will look, look. Austin down the middle. It's picked off by Griesdor. And yes, how about that diving interception? What a great play by Griesdor. 
and on fourth down, you know, I hate to say it, Mark, but if he drops it, you know, they probably gain about 25 <laughs> yards because that was fourth down. But a little surprised about the pass play, taking a shot downfield on fourth and short. A gutsy call by Columbus Grove, but a big response by Versailles. A.J. Griesdorn, seventh interception now in game number 15. And that was give his team the ball right on the 29-yard line with 3.03 to go and a pair of timeouts remaining. Columbus Grove gets the football first in half number two. Garrett, Garrett with room to run. He picks up a Lee's famous recipe chicken first down and more. And one thing we have not seen Versailles do is they've really been in a slow down, methodical, uh, offensive set and now you know you don't have to be in a two-minute offense because you got three minutes but you got to speed things up here a little bit and so it's going to be interesting to see how they get plays in how they can call things and will they use some of these timeouts they, they've got a couple here uh, you know before the end of the, the half first half 15 yard pickup on first down Bergman goes in motion takes it on a jet sweep into a gang of red shirts before he could get to midfield. They got about to the 48, so we'll give him four. Well, I like I like Lane Bergman. He gets in out in, in that motion set and he gets out and not only does he run the jet sweep well, but he jet sweep well, but he cuts back against the green wall. But one of the things I'm looking at is them setting Michael Osborne up off the keep. One of these times you're gonna see them run that jet motion and Osborne keep it. Player of the year in the Southwest District is Michael Osborne, offensive player of the year. Looks to the sideline to get the play call from his coach at 10 on the play clock. Pitch, Garrett trying to sweep right. Garrett first down and more as he gets into Grove territory. This is why I love football, Mark, because in all the you know inventions of offenses and motions and formations and RPOs and all the fancy stuff, the old I formation, guards pulling, quarterback lead blocking still works. It's effective. It does. And it's fun to see teams do that. Schmidtmeyer will set up to the left of Osborne this time. And Osborne, quarterback keep up the middle. He will get to about the 37. So we'll give him a couple on that play. It looks like they're going to burn a timeout for sales here. And Versailles will take a timeout. 116 to go in the half. Timeout WSN. Watch high school playoff football. We're back at Wapakana, where our tonight's timeouts are sponsored by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 116 to go. Versailles still has a timeout remaining as they are on the Grove 37-yard line. Stay with us at halftime. John and I will have a little analysis of the opening half and talk about what we might see in half number two. Pretty big defensive stand right here for Grove, though. Yeah, I think they have to, you know, for momentum purposes going into halftime, they have to make a stand here. And I think if you're Versailles, um, you know, you do want to score, but you got a really good field goal kicker as well. So maybe the goal is to get three here. Any points in this game is going to be important for each team. The, what briefs we do have favors Versailles here in quarter number two. It's not much, but there's a little bit behind him. Here's Garrett. Dances to the left side. Brought down by Kylan Mays. We called his name a lot defensively this evening. Yeah, Kylan Mays has been really impressive. He's uh, really active. You know, defensive linemen aren't always active. They're typically, you know, engaged and then they're just there. But Kylan Mays, great feet, and he's really been a big, uh, a big time player for the Bulldogs. Third and five. Osborne looks, pulls it down, wants to run with the football. And inside the 30, inside the 25. And you know, John, in, in, the, uh, in the MAC, he was listed as first team athlete. Yes. And you just saw that. Yeah, he, um, the, the crazy thing is that, you know, he had guys open for a split second, but I like the decision to just use his feet because now trying to, to run him down with the middle linebacker is incredibly tough. He picked up 10, his first down from just inside the 25 to throw. Schmidtmeyer gets a block. 
and they get him as he tried to go up the middle. I believe that was Moody, wasn't it? No, it was Mays again. Yeah, Kylan Mays. Kylan Mays is doing a really good job of breaking down and not over overrunning uh, and, 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 and keeping leverage on, on Michael Osborne. For sales, we'll take their final timeout. We're pleased to announce a new pricing for the WSN streaming service from $8 per month. You can watch the WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku and on Apple. Final timeout with 18 seconds to go. And the football on the 23 yard line. The winner will play Kirkland or Sugar Creek Garraway. And when Versailles won their state championship in 2001, they defeated Kirkland to, uh, 20 to 16. Columbus Grove State Championship was 20 years ago. They defeated Marion Local in the finals. Tell you, that, that seems like yesterday that, that Grove won that state title. You know, I remember that team and how fun they were to watch. And even a couple years ago, watching Versailles, you know, Ryan Jones had just taken over at that point, yep. Versailles, and watching them beat Kirtland was really an impressive thing. And I know that the state title game will be Friday at 10.30. I'll be at work, but it might be on my computer playing in the background. I'm not going to lie. All right, it is second and nine with just 18 seconds remaining and no timeouts. Trips to the right, single receiver left. Here, Schmidtmeyer will reset. Osborne to throw. Throws it to the end zone, and it is caught. Had to wait to see if he hauled it in. That was Watron. I'll tell you what, what a beautiful throw by Michael Osborne. And that's what happens when you've run the ball so effectively that when you throw a fade route like that, the corners have been taught all week, they've practiced all week, press coverage, make sure you're supporting the run, and then you run a fade route, and it's just really difficult to defend when you've been practicing defending the run all week. Versailles with 13 seconds to go in half, picks up a web insurance agency TD, and that will bring in Garrett to try the PAT, a Dales Concrete and Decorative Stamping PAT. And somebody move. A flag. I haven't had many flags this evening. No, we have not. Pretty well played football game, as you might expect. This late in the season. So now do you go for two? <laughs> you know, it's, it's a big temptation. It, it's it? a big temptation, but I think if you're for sales, you, the game's gone. Besides that pick early, the game's gone exactly how you wanted it to go. So I think you just get your, your point, and then you just go into halftime with a really commanding lead. So two minutes and 50 seconds went off the clock. It went eight plays and 71 yards. They are going to kick the PAT here with just 13 seconds to go. And did somebody move again? Uh, now I think you have a false start or maybe a legal motion on for sales here. Take it back the other way, perhaps. Let's see as we get our officiating crew to get Yep, we'll back it up that uh, yard and a half. Well, they had called a snap infraction, Mark. You don't see that very often. I'm guessing that they picked the ball up uh -huh. and probably put it down and or moved the ball a little bit too much before the snap. So let's try this again for the third time here <laughs> for Joel Garrett. He's even had a thought of it when they moved it up. The holder. Here's Garrett with Osborne to put it down. And it's blocked. Barraza came in off the edge and blocked the PAT. So that'll leave it at 23-7. John, I'm, I'm looking at uh, our, our state tournament next weekend. Of course, it starts on Thursday night yeah. with Division Two over in Canton. That will be the... Uh, the Division II matchup, perhaps Mashland Washington trying yeah. to actually win one on the field for a change instead of all the pole championships they won. <laughs> but uh, is that a little bit of a disadvantage? You play on Thursday after playing on uh, Friday the week before? A short week anyway. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, you know, but, you know, both teams have to play on Thursday. I think yeah. the only thing you do is, you, you you know, the kids really don't. They get tomorrow off, and then you probably pick up your Monday practice on Sunday. And, you know, you like to – Coaches like consistency, yes. you know that. You like to do the same thing every week, so it's going to be a difficult, it's going to be a challenge to play on a Thursday night, but it's a state title game, so. And, and uh, that, the coaches did not actually, or the coaches did want this Friday night thing, right, where we play all the games yeah. on Friday to this yeah. particular point anyway, and they got their wish in that respect. Yeah. 
And I think they're happy with that. Yep. I think they would trade that Thursday night state title game for this because it's been, it's been. I mean, as a as a former coach, I really like just Friday night football in the playoffs. Ball's going to be bounced down the field. Oh, hops over Reynolds' head. Barraza will go pick it up. And Barraza will get uh, over the 15-yard line. To continue on that, we've talked about the Division Six game. This game will be on Friday at 10.30 in the morning. Division Three will play the 3 o'clock game on Friday. And on Friday night, the finals of Division One will be played. Come back on Saturday, D7. That could be Maria Stein, Mary Loco, or Patrick Henry. And in that matchup, then D5 in the afternoon. And the evening game on Saturday is the Division Four game. So just from the 11-yard line with nine seconds to go. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Best and Barraza in the backfield. Here's Best, hands off Barraza, trying to get the left edge. Barraza's got some room to run. He's got the corner. Barraza is going to go over the 34-yard line, but the clock will run down, I believe, unless they got a timeout with the first down. And the answer is no. The first half will come to an end on that run by Barraza. It's a good one for the Tigers. They're going to take a 23-7 lead to the break. John and I with halftime show coming up. You're watching high school playoff football at WOSN. We're at Wapakoneta High School. The Columbus Grove Marching Band is on the field right now. Our halftime is sponsored by Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available at 800-776-3097. Mark Shine and John Zerbe. John, turnovers played a big role in the opening half and for sales is capitalized for this lead. Yeah, and we haven't seen a lot of them, one for each team, but both were critical. I mean, the, the pick early, which allowed Columbus Grove to get, finally get on, or get on the scoreboard first, but then uh, the kickoff obviously was the big one, and that was just propelled for sales. Um, now, actually, we've seen, we've had we have two turnovers by Columbus Grove. The pick there at the end, but uh, you know turnovers. We talked about it being an important part of the game, especially a key to the game. Uh, Grove has two of them. For sales has one. I think that could be a telltale sign for the second half. Well, you mentioned something earlier about uh, time of possession, and we don't have time of possession in front of us. But Columbus Grove has only had 16 plays in the open half and a punt. There's something to be said about rhythm. I mean, in, in getting into rhythm, getting your guys, you know, feeling comfortable on the field. They've had no rhythm. They haven't been able to be on the field enough to, to establish that. And they've done some good things when they've been out there, but just not enough. And Versailles, when they get the ball, they just hang on to it. I mean, they do not let it go. And that being said, we talked about halftime adjustments. Columbus Grove is going to get the football here to start half number three. This third quarter is going to be very important to them. I, I think so. And, you know, you look at their, you know, as the seasons went on, the third quarter has been their Achilles heel. They haven't scored a lot in the third quarter. And that could have been because they've been up 40 points, you know, against other teams. But I think right now you're not really saying let's score you're saying let's get first downs let's move the ball down the field let's let's get something established let's keep get our guys some uh, some momentum and so I think if you're coach Andy Schaefer right now you're just looking for any kind of positive and on the other side we've seen a heavy dose of Joel Garrett from yeah. the sales Tigers yeah he's been a workhorse and you know uh, I, I was a little surprised by that which I think you know you get this late in the season and when you can go to and, and Garrett's not a number two guy by any means right. but but you know you have that that one two punch with Osborne and Garrett and when Garrett can carry the load right now uh, in the state semifinal game, man, he's been impressive. And, and if you're for sales, you're feeling really good about what you've done in the first half. Our halftime has been sponsored today by Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. Third quarter coming up right after this. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. Third quarter action coming up. Our third quarter is presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac. I'm this area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this our home. Mark Shine and John Zerbe. Columbus Grove will get the football first in the opening half. Trenton Barraza has 50 yards on the ground in nine carries to lead the Columbus Grove offense. So Garrett has 17 carries for 97 yards to lead the Versailles offense as we head into quarter number three. 
Well, and I think if you're Columbus Grove, you'd, you'd have this opportunity to, to get back into this game right now. I mean, you're down you're down a pretty good amount. You haven't been down this this big the entire season, so you definitely want to get something going offensively here. And, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, Trent Barraza and what he's meant to this team. They've got to get him going, and they got to put basically the, 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 the ball into his hands right now to, to get this thing turned around. Barraza is deep on about the five yard line. He is the receiver closest to us. We'll have the kickoff option here by Bolin. And Leland will approach the ball and pop it up towards the 20 yard line. It's gonna hit and ooh. Wow. That was close, John. I'll tell you, uh, that could have been a, it, it went the right way for Grove. Yes, I mean, it, it ended up working out pretty well, but boy, that was one bounce away from being a nightmare. Well, we get to uh, use our first call the quarter sponsor. That would be Burke's Petroleum. They're now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke's Petroleum, dependable, available at 800-776-3097. On the kickoff that bounced out of bounds, allowing Columbus Grove to get the football on their own 35-yard line. Trenton Barraza, who wears number three, will be in the backfield along with Landon Best, who wears number two. A little bunch formation to the bottom of your screen. And Barraza behind a bunch of blockers, and we'll cut back, and we'll have nowhere to go. You know, I was trying to think about this at halftime, Mark. What could Grove do? I was thinking they could maybe screen a little bit. Maybe they could get some short passes. But definitely getting the ball to Barraza and trying to get, you know, Landon Best involved in the offense. But the problem is, is Versailles does not play a penetrating defense. They're not blitzing. They're not coming at you. They're just sound. And so, really, they have an answer to every single thing you're trying to do offensively. Zach Cordagne was on the bottom of the pile. Well, he initiated that tackle. Second and about nine and a half. Reynolds goes in motion, jet sweep for him. Cuts it back inside. Reynolds near the first down. It's going to go to about the, well, let's see where they mark it. Maybe he got there, John. He did. Nice shot in the arm for the Bulldogs. I like the play call by Coach Schaefer, getting Zach Reynolds on the edge, getting that first down. You can hear even the fans, the Columbus yep. Grove fans, trying to get these guys going, trying to let them know that, hey, we're behind you. We know we can, you can do this, and that's a big first down for the Bulldogs. First downs are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Ten yards, first down. Here comes Reynolds in motion again. This time the pitch will be to Barraza, and he will cut back inside over the 50 and into Versailles territory. He is close to a first down, but a bit short. Well, now they're past the 50. They're moving the football. They've had Zach Reynolds get a first down. Nice cut by Trenton Barraza there. I like how he cuts back, and he's just shifty, you know, just watching him run. He doesn't look, you know, super fast. Now he is super fast. I've seen him run and track, but um, the reality is is that he just shifty. I love the cut there and, and really uh, gets him in a good position here on second down. Cut back block by Reynolds on that play helped as well. This is Barraza off right tackle. And he will pick up a first down. Another lead for his recipe chicken first down to about the 43 yard line. So Columbus Grove doing exactly what they wanted to do. Not panic, not change the game plan, not start to do things that they're not typically used to doing. It's still, you know, relatively a close game. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a close game, but it's, it's, in, it's in distance, you know? And so they're just getting first downs. It's an important thing to do right now. Browser will go off left tackle. And he will be brought down in the, uh, this is he crossed the line by Levi Barji. I'm going to see a heavy dose of, dose of Trenton Barraza here as he gets inside the 40 to the 39, getting four. And Coach Schaefer's been known. I mean, he he went for it on fourth down when he was on his own 30. So I mean, the reality is is that you're in four down territory. You're down a couple scores here. You need to get first downs. Lofts it over the middle. It's caught. Kyle Hopkins. I'll tell you what a great pass by Landon Bess. He stood in the pocket there. He took a shot. 
right at the end, but he threw a nice pass uh, to Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins did a really nice job of going up and getting it and getting the first down. What a great throw by Landon Best. Columbus Grove in the red zone. Our red zone sponsor tonight is North, uh, Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scop, scrap iron, and scrap cars. 419-384-3392. This is Barraza again. That was best first completion of the game, and he put that right on the money. Well, and I think they've, they've wanted to throw the ball. I mean, uh, we've seen it early where they threw the ball on fourth down, and it was, you know, it was just a surprising call for them to throw on four, uh, fourth down. But I think they do have to throw on these early downs uh, and, and let him use his arm and his athletic ability. You know, it, you want to get Barraza, obviously, the ball first, but Landon Best is an important piece of this offense. Second and seven from the 13. Here's the end round. This is Hopkins. Cuts back inside, and he runs into Osborne and his buddies right about the seven-yard line. So he's going to end up being about a yard short. Talked about rhythm, getting in a rhythm. You can feel Grove getting that rhythm right now. And it's going to be a really big second down here, but I like the... Whoa, they got gave him the six and okay. a first down. Okay. It's going to be first and goal on a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. It was awfully close, yes, and they didn't, they didn't call yeah. the first down, but good enough for Grove. Now they're in really good position here to maybe get a score here early in the third quarter. Play nine of the drive. Barraza gets inside the five. What I like about him, Mark, is his feet. His feet don't stop. He, you know, really was stopped for about a one-yard gain, but he picked up two more just by keeping his feet and lunging forward. Columbus Grove has had the football for four and a half minutes here in quarter number three. And they're looking to, to tack seven on the board here. This is a Versailles team that gives up just 8.4 points per game on the season. Barraza behind best this time. Here's the pitch. Barraza trying to get the edge, and he gets knocked down. Oh, wow. Is that Osborne? Yeah, Michael Osborne. It was. Yep. Tell you what, what a great play because the formation, they were in trips formation, but they even had their H back to that side. So really a quad formation into the short side of the field, and then they pitch it with Barraza and looked like he had nowhere. I mean, it looked like he had a clear shot to the end zone, and Michael Osborne comes out of nowhere and makes a big stick. Yeah, for a two-yard loss, it's back to the six-yard line where it's third down. At 10 on the play clock. Best will be alone in the backfield this time. Barraza, no, Best kept it up the middle, and he spins into the end zone. Landon Best scores his 15th rushing touchdown of the season. Landon Best did a really nice job of selling that fake to Barraza. Early in the game, they ran that motion. They go empty. They have Barraza motion. They give it to him on the edge. And the nice thing is he really sold it there. And then he did a nice job of not only selling it, but getting inside the five-yard line and making a spin move and getting himself in the end zone, really giving Grove the shot in the arm that they needed. 11 plays. They took, uh, what, 5.42 off the clock to go those 65 yards and score a web insurance touchdown. They're going to go for two on the PAT attempt. Best looks, throws to the end zone, missed this guy in the end zone. He'll stay at a 10-point lead. But if you're Columbus Grove, 23-13 looks a whole lot better than 23-7. Did just what they want to do coming out of the break. Let's see what happens when they kick off to Versailles. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. We're back at Wapak, Connecticut. Columbus Grove has got on the scoreboard here early in half number two. Touchdown center sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. And now Grove will kick off to Versailles, trailing by just 10 now. 
pretty important PAT that would have cut it to one score game. Yeah, it would have. It would have. But I get it. You know, the reality is, is you want to get it to that 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 one score game. But I think you got time. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I, you know, you're you're halfway through the third quarter. There's still an opportunity here. I think the biggest thing is you got to play defense here. You got to get. Uh, Versailles' offense off of the field, which they really haven't been able to do so far. Here's Evan Veerhoff to kick off. He kicks it towards uh, to Bergman. Bergman over the 20. Bergman over the 30. And he's going to cut back eventually. He's brought down from behind. And they're going to get the football in good position, position are the Versailles Tigers. Solid teams can do all three things, Mark. They can play great defense, they can control the ball on offense, and they play great special teams. And right now, one big difference I've seen in this game is Versailles special teams. They've just been solid in every single phase of the kicking game. And they will get the football on their own 43-yard line in a 10-point game. Michael Osborne will set up alone in the backfield. Schmidtmeyer's in the slot. And Osborne will keep it himself off left tackle. Michael Osborne, first down and more. Yeah, nice, nice design play call there. They had a the, the H back come through and lead on a kick out. Um, and Mike, Michael Osborne did a really nice job of faking the sweep and then running up inside of there. And that's what we talked about just a second ago is Grove has got to figure out ways to get stops here. Uh, Versailles is basically, anytime their offense has been on the field, they've been able to move the ball and get first downs. If you're Columbus Grove, some at some point you got to get a stop. Watch number 57 for Versailles, Dominic Bargy, the left tackle, first team all district player. Up paved the way on that one. Bergman. Here's Bergman in motion. Bergman on jet sweep. He just keeps running. He's slippery. He the, is. You know, he's really hard to grab. He's really hard to, you know, he's not a big guy, so it's hard to get a body on him, but he just does a great job of keeping his feet moving. Bergman listed at 5, at 10, 150. Pushed it down to the 30, excuse me, to the, to the 36 yard line. A seven yard pickup. Brings up a second and three from the 36 yard line. And you know, now we've seen a heavy dose of Joel Garrett in the first half. First two plays in the uh, second half, Mark, he's not even in the backfield. Yep. 17 carries for Joel in the opening half. Motion. Motion fake it this time. Here's Osborne off the left side. And Michael Osborne will use his strength to pick up a first down. 5'11", 185. Well, in the first half, they did that several times. They, they jet motion and they ran that jet sweep. And I talked a little bit about it. I said sooner or later, they're going to fake that jet sweep and Osborne's going to keep it. In the first three plays this half, Osborne's ran it twice now. And there was that fake jet sweep where he had really good yardage there for the first down. To the 28-yard line. He picked up eight on that play. Picked up a Lee's famous recipe chicken first down. Here's Garrett. Inside the 25. Solid four yard pickup. Well, and the time of possession. I mean, you know, we don't have a, an actual stat tracker here, but the reality is, is that if you're Grove, you got to get Versailles' offense off the field, and they just continually get first down after first down after first down, and it's just been effective for the Tigers tonight. Second and five and a half. A pair of receivers go each way. Garrett's in the backfield along with Osborne. This will be Osborne running left. Makes the first guy miss and gets to about the 22 yard line. Pick up of a couple. That was a really nice defensive play by the uh, uh, by the Grove Bulldogs. Um, Ock Moody was there to make a nice play as well. Um, and, and just and just making sure that Osborne had nowhere to run. I mean, they make a nice play, and it looked like he could have had a crease, but the D Grove defense uh, really uh, stuck in there. And now you got a big third down situation, Mark. Versailles has really not had a ton of third down situations tonight, so third and five is manageable, but the defense here for Grove needs to step in and make a big play. We're on the Grove side of the field. Their fans understand the importance of this play right here. Here's Bergman in motion on the jet sweep, first down and more inside the red zone goes Blaine Bergman. Well, I like that play call. I like the fact that they got out there and 
uh, did a really nice job of getting him on the edge. But, you know, one of the things I saw right away, Mark, was Luke Kayser. He's the tight end. Hasn't really haven't talked about him much tonight, but he had the key block. He had his guy turned. He had a reach block. It's a really difficult block to make. Reached him, got him blocked, and that was, propelled them to get the first down. In the red zone at the 13-yard line, sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling. Bergman again. Osborne will keep it this time. He goes off right tackle. He gets to about the six-yard line. Yeah, Landon Houston made a nice play for the Bulldogs there to stop it. But uh, Osborne, before Osborne picked up uh, six yards and now really puts him at second and four inside, almost inside the er, inside the ten-yard line. Our instant replays tonight are brought to you by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. So Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Play clock approaching 10. For sales takes a lot of time for each play. Here's Osborne alone in the backfield. Bergman again. Osborne will keep it this time with Bergman out in front of him. Osborne turns the corner and gets knocked down at about the five yard line. Gonna be short of the first down. Yeah, Osborne looked like he was going to get in the end zone. Zach Reynolds did a nice job of stepping up, and he didn't necessarily tackle Osborne, but he got in his way enough to the point where he had to dive, and now you get to that another, another third down situation, Mark, where the Grove defense really needs to step it up here and get a stop. They need to get to about the three-yard line, and they are on the six. Here we go, big third down, third and two from the six. Osborne and Garrett in the backfield. Garrett to the left side of Osborne. Osborne keeps, and he went down at right about the five-yard line. This is going to set up a fourth down call for Coach Jones. That's right, and the Grove defense, you know, I've said it a couple times, and I'm not picking on them, but they needed to get a stop. That was the stop that they needed, and if you're Coach Jones, you got a nice lead here. Do you go for a field goal, or do you stay aggressive? Do you keep after it, knowing that if you don't get it, you're in great field position. It looks like he's going to be aggressive here. They need fourth and about two. And we are approaching the end of a very rapidly moving quarter where each football team has had the ball once. And we're going to get a official's timeout on the field. I'll reset the play clock. Osborne goes under center this time. Keeps it himself, pushes forward. And looking for the call, but it looks like he got it. And that's the thing that's tough about that, Mark, is that it's a quarterback sneak, but it's not your traditional where he's just getting his head down. You can see Michael Osborne take a step left and then find the open gap and then slide right through it. Huge first down inside the 10-yard line. Columbus Grove scored their touchdown on the 11th play of their opening drive of this half. This will be Versailles' 11th play of this drive that began back on their own 43-yard line. And uh, they don't have to run a play, John. They can let the clock burn if they choose and end the quarter. Well, and that's part of the strategy is using up as much of that clock as you can. And I think that's what Coach Jones is going to do is take it into the fourth quarter. Here. That he did. Each team had the football once in quarter number three. For sales, we'll have it on the two-yard lines. We go to the fourth quarter. You're watching high school playoff football, WOSN. As we head to the fourth quarter, our fourth quarter sponsor is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the year's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this our home. And it will be a first down on the two yard line for Versailles with a 10 point lead. 21 plays in that quarter, 11 of them by Columbus Grove. 10 of them by Versailles. And that's kind of how I thought it would go from the beginning. You know, no, no turnovers that quarter. Really solid football by both teams and just an impressive half, or impressive quarter by both Columbus Grove and Versailles. Levi Bargy is in front of Garrett as Osborne goes under center. Here's Garrett. Hits and spins into the end zone for a Web Insurance Agency touchdown. Well, Joel Garrett's just been the workhorse tonight. He's just, you know, as, we, as you look at what uh, what they do offensively, it's it's a balance between him and Michael Osborne. But 
Garrett has really been impressive tonight. He's been the guy that they've really counted on for everything, and what a nice play for the Tigers to really push this lead now. Well, if that's what you do if you want to win championships, right? They, they came out, they did what they, they wanted to in, in the form of Columbus Grove's touchdown, but that you answer right back. Well, you don't, you don't panic. You don't start doing things that are unnatural to you. You just keep doing what you do and you respond. Here's the PAT attempt. That sails through by Garrett. Extra points that are sponsored by Dale's Concrete and Dicker Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential and concrete needs. For sales answer, they push the lead to 17, 30 to 13. Back with a kickoff after this. You're watching high school playoff football at WOSA. Our scoreboard tonight is sponsored by Hawker Drywall Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And the scoreboard shows Versailles 30 and Columbus Grove 13 as each team has put one score on the board here in the second half. Kickoff, sails down towards Bar uh, to Barraza. And Barraza up over the 30 to about the 34 yard line where Columbus Grove will begin. You know, Marcus, we come into this game, you know, there were just so many similarities, you know, besides each having a 12 and 2 record. And as you look at their offenses, they both average around 200, over 200 yards rushing a game. They both average a little over 100 yards rushing, scoring around 30 points a game. I mean, really, the difference tonight has been the Versailles offense being able to have these long drives. I mean, I, I, you know, honestly, Columbus Grove's offense hasn't even – I wouldn't even say they've been unsuccessful. They just really haven't had opportunities to get on the field. But that's been the key to this game is these long drives by the Versailles Tigers. Peraza will set up to the right of Landon Best. Best fakes it to him and will roll. Pass caught on this side by Sage Sextoldy. Well, now you're in a different situation. It's the fourth quarter. You're down 17. You just can't take time off the clock. You got to be almost in two minute mode the whole way because you've got a lot to make up here uh, with just uh, over 11 minutes left in this game. Seven yard pickup. This time Barraza will set up to the left of Best and fake the pitch. Best up the middle. Landon Best will pick up a first down and more. A Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken first down. I like what Lane and Best did there. He faked it, but then he got up in there and spun and got the first down. If he doesn't spin, he doesn't get the first down. And it was just a really nice play. He made a great throw on first down and then spins here and gets a, uh, a first down on second down. Six yard pickup. It is to the 47 yard line. Two minute drill here. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Best to Barraza in the backfield. This will be Barraza running right, cuts back, and tries to make yet another cut back and will pick up just a couple to the 49. Yeah, once again, that solid, solid defense by Versailles. They just do such a good job of not over committing um, defensively. And just, uh, you know, Dominic Meyer there is one of them who made a great play. They don't they don't get upfield. You know, a lot of times you watch the NFL and you watch these defensive ends come off the edge and fly upfield. Well, that's for the NFL. That's not for <laughs> high school football. For sales plays disciplined defense. And they do so very, very well on the season. Best lost it over the middle. It's caught. He put the ball right in the hands of Zach Reynolds. I think one thing you, you've seen so far tonight is that even though Landon's best stats don't necessarily show that he throws the ball a lot, he can throw the football. And only being a sophomore, he has a really bright future ahead of him. He stands in there, he keeps his feet, he's solid, he throws the ball. I really like what Belena Best brings to this game. 14-yard pickup and a Leeds Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Raza goes in motion and will set up outside now. Best again, looks. And looks and throws and caught on the sideline. It is diving catch on the yeah. sideline, Zane Stecksholdy. Beautiful throw by Best and a really nice catch by Stecksholdy. Stecksholdy went down. It was not an easy catch. And the biggest thing is he had to keep that foot in bounds and he goes low, keeps his foot in bounds. And this Grove offense is running the two-minute drill very nicely. 16-yard pickup and another lead, famous recipe chicken first down. 
This is a pitch to Barraza, left side. And he made, and we got a flag gonna fly in. That will be our first call of quarter number four. First call of each quarter sponsored by Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. That would be 800-776-3097. Well, one of the things that you know you typically don't talk about is you know, how well the, the game has been played as far as just it's been a clean game and not a lot of flags have been called only the necessary ones and this is really a, a great officiating crew I mean Jeff Klaus and Jim Epperly and Ben Mock, Brett Roberson some guys that I know are top officials so they've done an outstanding job of calling this game Brady Muhalan and Gregory Bartimus round out that crew's best to throw on first and 20 and just throws it up field. And a whole lot of Tigers going after it. Osborne make a catch. And it looks like they're going to call that incomplete. It looked like to me he came down with it, but the official down here on the sideline says that he did not come up with it. Columbus Grove is going to really uh, they're, they catch a real big break there. Well, I thought Best was trying to throw it away, but yeah. instead he didn't get it out of bounds. And opportunity there for a couple of different Tigers to make a play on the ball. We go to second and 20 from the 32-yard line. And I don't think you have to panic and try to throw the ball downfield this far right now because it, it is second and 20, but you're in four down territory. So the reality is, is that you don't have to pick up all 20 yards on one play. It's Barraza to the right of best, and we are going to get a Versailles timeout. That would be a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Playoff Football on WSN. First time out of the second half goes to the Versailles Tigers with 9.28 to go here in the fourth quarter. Set their defense shot. Yeah, just trying to get, you know, it's, it's a smart timeout right now. And the reality is you want to see that formation, which they saw second and 20. They're going to do something a little bit outside of what they typically do because they got to get yardage here. So nice timeout by Coach Jones to make sure everybody's on the same page. Barraza will set up behind best this time. Fake the pitch. Throw it over the middle, and the ball is laid out there. Is it picked off? It is. Michael Osborne is going to come down with it this time, and it is going to be a pick for the Versailles Tigers. Michael Osborne with an interception. That would be the third turnover of the game, John? It would be, and that is that is so critical with that timeout. And I'm guessing they talked to their secondary there of, hey, they're trying to pick up big yardage. The play before that, they're trying to pick up big chunks. And just talking to this defensive backfield to make sure that you're keeping your eyes on your keys and you're, you're dropping to where you're supposed to be, and it paid off for that big turnover there for the Tigers. Versailles will take over at about their own three-yard line following the interception. Second interception of the game thrown by Lynn Best this evening. Osborne was under center with Schmidt-Meyer and Garrett behind him. Here's Garrett. Pushes the ball up over the five to about the eight-yard line. Good run on first down. Well, Versailles, you know, we, they, they're, they're, one of the keys was for them to win the turnover battle. And, and really, uh, besides the, the early turnover in the, in, in, on the pick, they've done that. They've been clean. They haven't turned the ball over. They've been smart um, and really haven't had to, th had to throw the ball. I mean, needing to throw the ball, one thing, but they haven't had to whatsoever. So I look for them to have long uh, drive, a long drive again here, a lot of uh, Joel Garrett. Garrett picked up four on first down to the seven-yard line. He and Osborne both in the backfield at this time. This will be Garrett. Quick feet, jump cut in the hole, and he will pick up a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. I think there's almost that point where, as a as a defense, if you're Columbus Grove, you know that you know that you're down big, and so that at this point. You're tired, but you got to get a turnover. So if you're defense, you're, you're reaching for the ball. You're trying to get a strip. you got to do something to create a turnover here. Tom, one of your keys today was win the line of scrimmage, and Versailles is doing that. Well, and they do it so effectively. I mean, if you look at their, their kids, their kids are nice size, but they're not. You know, they're not these massive players. They're just so technically sound. They do everything right. Their footwork is perfect, and it's just so impressive to watch such a well-coached team dominate like this. Here's Schmidt Meyer. He will push the pile to the 22 and pick up about five. 
Douglas. 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 going to keep the ball on the ground and just keep coming at you. Well, and, and they don't even really need to be in a shotgun, shotgun formation. They're under center. This is a really good opportunity to, to work some of that. If they, it looks like they're going to be making it into the state title game next week, they're going to have to have some of these sets for next week as well. So uh, right now is a good opportunity to just work on some things that you can carry into next week. Man in motion. Osborne will keep this time. He will pick up a first down. Big yardage coming in chunks right now. It's out to the 34-yard line. Pick up a 12. The other thing if you're for sales right now is you're really watching that play clock. You don't want to really snap the ball with more than maybe 12 to 15 seconds on the play clock. You want to take up as much time as you can with just seven minutes to go here in the game. And you really want to try to, to run this clock as much as possible. You can see him looking to the sidelines to get the play call. We know that Kirtland was ahead 7 nothing in yep. the, the third quarter. And of course, you'll have that uh, by the time this airs on Saturday evening. You will have that score and who the winner of this game will match up with next Friday morning. Here's Bergman. Goes, gets to about the 40-yard line. That would be a six-yard pickup for him. Sometimes, John, you can come into a game and say, you know what, we're going to stop this. Mm -hmm. But there are so many weapons on the Versailles sideline right here they could use. And, and here's the crazy thing, Mark. I was just about to say this, I, 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 and this is unofficial as well, but I, I've counted about eight plays that they've ran. I mean, they've done different things formationally, but they've only ran about eight plays, but they've got different guys to get the ball to, and that's what makes it so difficult. It's simple for offensive linemen to run these plays, but when you have elusiveness out of three or four different guys, it makes it tough to defend. Bergman in motion again. Gets the edge, cuts back, and he will get to the 48-yard line and pick up yet another lead. Famous recipe chick chicken first down. Well, and as you're looking at next week, you know, you're, if you're if you're scouting Versailles, the first thing you're going to say is stop Michael Osborne. The second thing you're going to say is we got to limit Joel Garrett. But I'm going to tell you what, Mark, looking at next week, if you're Kirtland or whoever else they're going to might they might have to play. Lane Bergman's going to play a big yeah. part in next week's game because he has been one that's really added a nice punch to this Tiger offense. And you better figure out how to handle Alex Gilmore, Zach Cardanye, Dominic Bargy, <laughs> Dominic Meyer, Caden Sarkey, and then the tight end, Luke Kaiser. Yes. <laughs> Here's Garrett, sweeps right. Got a block from Washington on the corner. He will bang into the territory belonging to Columbus Grove and pick up yet another first down. Uh, and you can just feel it now. They yep. know the game's, you know, in hand. Uh, they know that they're knocking on the door to, to play in Canton next weekend. You can feel the confidence starting to, to grow as we uh, are getting just under five minutes here in the fourth quarter. They began this drive on their own three-yard line, and they did so more than four minutes ago. They are now on the 38 of the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Different running back this time as they put Aaron Bolin into the game. Aaron wears number 33. Not a bad idea to get some guys on the field right now when the game is, you know, it looks like it's in reach. It's not a bad idea to get some young guys some opportunities to play in a state semifinal game. You might not get that chance next week. So anytime you can get guys on the field that can get this experience, it's a positive thing for your program. Bowling will set up beside Osborne. Osborne keeps it himself inside the 40. To about the 33 yard line. That would be a pickup of four for him. We need to get to the 28 for a first down, looking at about third and five. And the clock just keeps going. Well, and here's the thing, you know, years ago when Chip Kelly was at Oregon, it was such a popular thing to get in as many plays as you possibly could. Gus Malzahn, who's the was the head coach at Auburn for a while, wrote a book about how it's important to score because you get so many plays in. I love the fact that Versailles just, we're not going to do that. We're going to run the play clock all the way down. We're going to hang on the football as long as possible. 
Pitch. Boland cuts inside. Gets inside the 30. Be close to a first down. See what the call is here and where it's placed. Looks like it's going to be just a shade short. They went 11 plays on their first possession here in half number two. And this will be the 11th play of this drive. I've always said that possession, you know, time of possession is the greatest defense. I mean, it really is. I mean, you can play outstanding defense, which for sales does, but your best defense is just to have your offense on the field the whole night. They've had the football for more than six minutes. Began back on their three yard line, and let's see what they're going to do here. Play clock is at nine. Osborne back under center again. Here's Bolin. And Bolin gets to the 26 yard line, and he will pick up a first down. Another Lee's famous recipe chicken first down. One, two, three, four, five of them on this drive alone. Textbook, textbook, textbook. Just do your thing, get yards, no big plays. I mean, we really haven't seen a, any what you would call an explosive play tonight. Mm -hmm. Uh, all, all plays of 10, you know, or, or less than that tonight. It's just been so impressive. When this game comes to an end, John and I will clock us for a moment. We'll talk about a Stolly Hustle Award winner for this evening and come back and put together some final thoughts on this particular game. We have 2.12 left in this one. He's bowling again, and this time nowhere to go for number 33. How many tackles is Mays making? He's Taylor done an outstanding Mays. job. Been, yes. Columbus Grove will take a timeout. We will take a Metzger Financial Services timeout as well. Watching high school playoff football at WOSN. Transistor Replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. We had a lot of instant replays that favor the team wearing white jerseys and orange helmets tonight. And they've just had an outstanding team. I mean, outstanding season so far. They've got a lot to be proud of. And, you know, as they make their way to Canton next week, a ton of momentum and small town pride. It's, it's really neat to see Versailles get another opportunity to state title. Bergman on the sweep, and they're going to get him in the backfield. John, a few years ago when Al Hetrick was coaching at uh, Versailles, I had a chance to go down with the WSN guys and interview Al. And uh, we stayed a little bit long, and practice started. I said, Coach, you want to get to practice? He said, no, my assistant coaches run this place. And I'm sure it's an exaggeration, but sure. those assistant coaches are all extremely important people. we got a flag on that play. It'll be third down. Well, I, I think it could be understated, you know, when you talk about, and you were you were a head coach for a long time, Mark. So you, you understand this a little bit. You, you, head coach gets all the, the credit when you win and, and, and all the blame when you lose, but those assistant coaches, your staff, one of the the, the, two, the telltale signs of a successful program is have your, has your staff been consistent over a long period of time? This big article this week about the Marion local staff and how many years those guys have all been together and, and uh, the, as they add a new blood once in a while and bring that yep. particular person along, but the, the core of people remain the same. And, uh, and obviously that's true here with for sales and this yep. young staff that Coach Jones has put together. Andy Schaefer's staff has done a great job at, uh, at Columbus Grove as well. You got 50 to 70 players, you're not going to coach them by yourself. No. And, and I would say that the head coach, you know, I know Coach Schaefer does an amazing job of this. He, he's created a really uh, an awesome culture for his coaches to coach in and his players to play in. They want to be a part of the program, and that's important. As the head coach, you have to be that person. You have to, to create a place that people want to be a part of. And I know Coach Schaefer's done that over the last several years at Grove. He's really created such a, a, a neat uh, thing for that community. Here's third and 11 for Versailles. They're on the 27-yard line of Columbus Grove, who's now burned two timeouts. Osborne will keep it and go right this time. Spins one, stays in bounds, and got to about the 23-yard line, did Michael Osborne. And Columbus Grove will take their final timeout. And uh, while we have a moment, then, John, with this final Columbus Grove timeout, 
this Wapak facility, outstanding <laughs> high school football facility. Oh, and then you've got, uh, you know, Mike Watt and you've got uh, uh, Tom Hunter and Brad Rex running this. Their, their, their ability to put tournaments on here is outstanding. No, oh, it's just great. It is, there really is no other facility in our area like this. And, uh, of course, I live rather close to Wapak, so it's nice to always drive down here and, and see the facility. But just the upgrades and, and the, the time that they put in. And then they love putting on tournaments for other schools. And you got to think about this. You know, their, their team's not playing, so this is all for other schools. And um, I haven't seen Superintendent Aaron Rex up here in the press box working. So they're all hands on board, making sure that it's a great experience for both schools tonight. And, and the OHSAA cannot be uh, happy enough with schools who are willing to do that in all sports. Uh, they run basketball tournaments yep. here at, at Wapak as well. So it's just one of those things that you do when you have a great facility like this to have great people running it. And the thing is, you got to have those people. You mentioned the Tom Hunters and the, the different people that are volunteering and helping out, you know, helping Brad Rex tonight you know, run all these things. And it is true, you got to have great volunteers helping and supporting your programs. Versailles is looking at fourth and seven with 1.52 to go as Columbus Grove has now used all of their timeouts. Bowler will set up in the backfield with Osborne. And Osborne's going to pitch it to the end zone. He's got a guy out here, and it's going to fall incomplete. He was trying to get the ball to Jace Watrin. That's the same play that they ran earlier on and scored on, and in the, in really, Ball was a little bit underthrown. He had him. He had him beat. He had the opportunity to get him, but it was a little bit underthrown. But I do like the play call. I mean, you know, you say, well, you've run the ball to this point. Why throw when you're up 17? But like I said, the reality is, is that you're looking at next week. You're going to have to throw the ball a little bit next week to, to to come out of there with a state title. So good opportunity to work on some of those things now. For sales, had the football for seven and a half minutes. They took the ball from their own three-yard line to the actually down to the 23-yard line of Columbus Grove, where Grove will take over. That just uh, iced the football game for them. And a lot of different bodies in here now wearing white jerseys. Best will throw towards the sideline. It's caught over here on the sideline by Zane Steckschulte. And Mark, I should have thought of this tonight. I didn't really keep the stat, but have we seen a punt? <laughs> I don't think we have. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it just came to my mind that both these offenses have been aggressive. They've been, uh, they've not been afraid to go for it on fourth down. I can't remember seeing a punt tonight. I'll look back through my play sheet. <laughs> I think we had one by Columbus Road. I mean, okay. I'll look back at it after this play. Blitz coming off the edge. Best has to roll. He's got a guy him in the backfield. Sack in the backfield. That came from Travis George. The thing about Versailles is they're not bringing pressure. They're not blitzing. It's just their 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 pressure coming from their defensive linemen. Early in quarter number two, Columbus Grove did punt. That's the only okay. punt of the football game. Here's Best running, throws it upfield. It's caught on the sideline. I think that was Hopkins. And we'll, yes, it is Kyle Hopkins. Not quite to the first down stick. It's going to be about the 30-yard line. As they need to get the football now to the 33-34 to pick up a first down. It's fourth down. Best will hand off to Barraza. And he will push towards the first down sticks. I think he might have gotten I think the, they're going to give it to him here. Yeah. The Lee's famous recipe chicken first down. So Grove used all their timeouts on defense trying to stop the clock. So offensively, they just got to move here. A minute to go in the football game. Best to the sideline. It's caught by Reynolds. And Reynolds gets out of bounds. And I guess he got to the about the 43 yard line. That was a nine yard pickup. Yeah, nice, nice pitch and catch there. Nice, just first down play. And you know, even if you're Grove right now, you might have to take a shot down the field with under a minute to go in this game. Good chance to do it on second and one. Best to throw. And throw it down field, and it's going to be picked off. Out there was Bergman, Lane Bergman with an interception. That will be the third INT of the game, and that was just kind of forced to trying to make something happen. Well, he has to, and in forcing, it's a good way to say it, only because you have to. You're under a minute to go. you got to get a play. you got to get a score. You can't just get five-yard pickups up and down the field. So Lane and Best being aggressive there, no fault of his, you know, putting in a tough position to have to make that throw. Well, you know, part of that we can think about is 
Best will be back next year. Barraza will make a lot of their skilled players return next year for this, this Columbus Grove football team. And from what I hear, Mark, JV team is very good. Junior high team is very good. Midget team is very good. Columbus Grove has a lot of success coming their way in the future. Versailles will take a knee. And they will see how quickly we get the football set right here, see if they have to do it one more time or not. Again, John and I will be back after this game comes to an end and talk about our Stolly Hustle Award winner this evening and wrap this one up. There's the kneel down by Versailles. A lot of happy folks wearing white jerseys on the far side of the field right now. Well, what an incredible game, and and you know what a great game by Versailles. But I would say this: what a what a great season by Columbus Grove. They have nothing to hang uh, their heads low about. Uh, they've had a, a great season to get to this this point and to play uh, as physical of, of a team as Versailles and hang in there with them. They have nothing to be ashamed of. That'll bring this one to an end. The Versailles Tigers will move to the state final game with a 30 to 13 win over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Post game right after this, you're watching high school tournament football, WOSN. We're back at Wapakoneta High School. The Versailles Tigers have taken a 30 to 13 win over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Our first order of business is to present our Stolly Hustle Award winner. You can check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner, and you can do so on WSN's YouTube page. And our, a lot of guys we could have named wearing yep. white jerseys this yep. evening, but we decided to go with the senior Joel Garrett tonight. I just think early in the game, especially that first half, his 17 carries in the first half, he just set the tone. He really made the separation, and I think Coach Ryan Jones came out with that game plan that they were going to ride the back of Joel Garrett and put them in position to take a commanding lead, which they did. And it's just, it just impressive because, you know, when you look at this team and you look at all the different weapons they have, including Michael Osborne, and Joel Garrett was really the difference maker tonight. How about the Columbus Grove Bulldogs? Well, like I said earlier, they, they have nothing to hang their heads low about. They had a phenomenal season. They beat uh, their rival Bluffton twice, uh, league title as well. And, and to get to the state semifinal game, I know that Coach Andy Schaefer was, you know, in their, in their community wanted to make it to the state title game. But they'll look back on this years from now and be very proud of what they accomplished. Columbus Grove and Andy Schaefer's team will finish this season with 12 wins and three losses. They will be champions of the Northwest Conference. For sales, John, they're going to go to 13-2 and, and next Friday, Friday morning at 10.30, they're playing for state championship. And, and I think they're going to carry a lot of confidence in that game. If you look back on their season, they've had an incredible season. They've, they've, they've uh, only lost to Marion Local and Coldwater by a combined total of eight points. They've really dominated in lots of different uh, fashions. And then, you know, they'll go into Division Six with playing probably the toughest schedule of anybody that, they, that they'll play next week. So they're going to have a lot of confidence going into Canton that next week. That is exactly what the computer said. They had the toughest schedule this year in Division Six football, and they will play for the state championship next Friday. That will be in Canton, and it will be at 1030 in the morning. I want to thank our sponsors, Hawker Drywall, Structure Outdoor Ohio, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Web Insurance, Dale's Concrete, Northwest Ohio Recycling, Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, Burke Petroleum, and Metzger Financial Services. And John, because of contractual reasons, we can't go to the state tournament. This is our final football game of the year. Can appreciate all you did for us uh, this particular season. I want to thank our crew. Today. That's Abby Beck and Jacob O'Neill, along with all the other people who did our technical and camera work for us this season. And Nick Flanick will edit this all back together on Beatty Road for you to watch. Well, for sales, 30, Columbus Grove 13, a final from Wapakoneta. You've been watching high school playoff football on WOSN.